itu yang membuat istilahnya mereka tuh kayak ya wuh sampai segitunya So here are five things that I have found really difficult whilst living here in Malaysia. Oh. I've been here now for three full months. I couldn't list ten, actually. I came up with five, and even that was quite difficult. So let's take it okay. from the top. The first thing that I have found difficult adapting to situations here in Malaysia are the insects. Mosquitoes. Yeah, I'm kind of getting used to it. The repellent is working. I'm needing yes, raga, less of it because gitu. I think my blood is getting accustomed to the mosquitoes. Have to say though, they're not like those evil ones, you know, where they bite you and you come up with this massive bump and it doesn't. It takes forever for it to go away. They literally bite you. There leaves like a bit of a red spot and itches for a bit and it's gone. So that giant ants, um, everything to do with nature that you could imagine with insects, you're going to find here in Malaysia. And of course, the lizards, the geckos that come Kada, inside the okay. house. But you know what? There's things that you can do about Maybe it. Asam, You've got uh, repellents, they've got sprays. This place that I'm staying at right now has actually got um, like the netting. You know, the uh, they call it in Jalia in Urdu, but they're like um, uh, like a mesh that goes inside the glass. So you can still open the yeah. window, enjoy the fresh air, but without having any of the bugs coming in. Ants, another big problem. But like I said, there's repellents. It's not that big an issue, but it is something that I recognized as different to being in the UK. So the other thing that I found difficult here was, um, and I found this the very first time that I came here. So this is okay. number two on my list. When I came here in December, I came with a tidy wedge of cash to spend. I found that relatively easy, but some places they wouldn't even accept my cash. Now, the whole world is going into this whole e-money okay. thing, right, and electronic, rather than having cash, complete cashless. And I have to say, Malaysia has moved quite forward with it. Maybe it's because of the Chinese influence um, being so close to China and the fact that there's so many Chinese living here in this country. So here's the difficulty. You have got, when you come from the UK, from your bank account, you need to transfer into a transferring account, okay. like TransferWise. And then from there, you're going to transfer it into your touch and go. You need to download apps. They've got apps uh -huh, for everything. Touch and go. There's that, there's do it now. But they're e-wallets. And so some shops that you go into, you want to pay by what they call Wave, which is Apple Pay. Or you want to pay with your uh -huh. bank card. Or you want to pay with cash. And they don't accept it. They only accept the e-wallets. Now there's a reason, because oh. I asked them, why so much complication? Okay. I asked a shopkeeper Rumit and he said eh. the reason was that there's a guarantee with, like when you pay for something by Visa card, for example, you okay. could call back the transaction. There's also a lot of crime, there's also a lot of fraud that occurs with, you know, the, um, the contactless cards. So they brought out this new e-wallet as a movement into cashless society and that um, is guaranteed because when you make your payment it hits their bank account and the transaction is ah. um, guaranteed and it is confirmed yeah. and it is um, secure so that's one of the things but so you're going to have to get yourself a touch and go account you can get a touch and go card but you're going to have to keep topping it up because believe me the amount of times that i've run out of money on my touch and go it's been frustrating also because i'm dealing with pound conversion <laughs> and i'm here holidaying yes, so my see. expenditure may be a little bit on the high side they have a monthly limit that i'm allowed to spend so i might decide that i want to do something and ping it's declined because i've hit my limit you can ask for the limit to be increased but it's not straightforward and easy and i've given up doing it and i'll do it another day so okay Baru um, tahu kalau they ada have limitnya. toll crossings, quite a lot of toll crossings, which you're going to need the card for. Um, and touch and go seems to be the way to go. So if you are planning on visiting Malaysia, get touch and go. It's blue. I'll stick a little de uh, symbol here for you to recognize it with. Download it to your phone because you are going to okay. need it. And most places have touch and go. And they really rely on your phone. So do get yourself a SIM when you come here. It's inexpensive and it will just streamline and make your life a lot more seamless. I also yeah. found that a lot of my visa cards weren't working in the machines. And sometimes I go to shops and I can use my visa card in some, but not in others. 
Starling is a bank account that I've opened up in addition because of the charging structure compared to the mainstream bank. So transfer what I want into Starling. Starling then moves over into um, Wise. Wise moves over into Touch and Go. Do okay. you see what I mean? Why it's the difficulty. The next thing that I found difficult actually was, um, it's actually a positive, but it's negative. So number three on my list Apa is tu? the food. Food. What? Durian. If you're a foodie, go on a diet before you come to Malaysia. I would recommend that you lose at least a stone, five kilograms, Lima kilo. at, at least, because when you get here, there is an exceptional variety of food that is so wow. tasty. You will always be eating Begitu out. The other betul, reason you're always going to be eating out is because it's so cheap. The f- eating out here, you can you could have a meal for as little as. 15 ringgits, which is two pounds. And it's What? a full-on home-cooked style meal. Um, and then you can go to the higher end if you really want to. But I have found that because there's not many of us here, that eating out is actually cheaper than me buying food from the uh-huh. local supermarket and cooking at home. The cooking here, the food here is very clean. Um, the enough. environment is very clean. Yeah, clean. And so I haven't experienced having difficulty with my stomach. I think there'll always be some places that you go to that are going to affect you. But wow. so far, so good. I've been lucky. I haven't had any issues from any place that I've eaten out. Now, eating out is not just a social thing, but it's a requirement. And we were going to supermarkets spending five, six hundred ringgits per week with a plan that we were going to cook at home. And so many times that we did. But I found okay. that we were throwing out some things by the end of the week because they'd gone off. Or um, they're still in the cupboard and they didn't get eaten because we were eating out. So I find now that as I'm traveling, I think that eating out for me is the simplest, easiest option. And it just is stress-free. Yeah. But as I said, the difficulty... Bener sih guys ya. Kalau kita makan di luar itu bebas stress gitu. Lebih mudah gitu. Apalagi di sana itu di Malaysia. Uh, makanan-makanan lebih murah gitu ya guys ya. Dan enak-enak itu yang membuat istilahnya mereka tuh kayak... Ya, yeah, the food. Kalau kamu mau ke Malaysia, kamu harus dia dulu 5 kilo baru pergi ke Malaysia katanya. Wow, sampai segitunya. With that is self control and if you have none, you will gain weight. I have control. <laughs> I've gained. Lah. And everybody said I would. And I have to say another reason for that is there's sugar in everything. You buy a juice, Ada you gula have di to say sugar free. Ah. You know, you've got to check the meal itself. You'll be even the salads might have sugar in them so you need to make What? sure that when you're eating out that you ask them if it's got sugar in it because they'll make it for you if you don't want you know if you don't want sugar in it they'll do it for you okay moving on to my next one what oh is my number four and that is the distance, distance. from the uk so i've always been Jarak the kind of person Inggris, yeah. that wants to live near Like, yeah. I want to travel nearby. I've never really ventured ventured that far. The furthest I went to was Pakistan. I went to Saudi Arabia. I went to Dubai. They're like the furthest. I've never gone any further than that. Uh, the whole long haul flight was okay. not appealing to me. And um, it was a definite, definite no, no. There's not a chance in hell that I am going to travel on an airplane for 14 hours or uh-huh. waste But lost job that though. much time because Not only is the distance, but you've got a seven hour to okay. eight hour time difference here. So their night is your day and your day is their night. So that becomes a, can be a negative, can be a difficulty, but at the same time, it can also be a positive in some perceptions. So the way that I've mastered this is you've got to have time and you've got to break it up. Uh-huh. So instead of doing a full 14 hours, which I have done and it was doable, so I'll give it that stop off somewhere and do two days in another country. How more amazing could it oh, get begitu. that not only do you get to your destination here in Malaysia, but you get to stop off somewhere. You know, they've got Singapore Sigata Airlines, there's dulu. Qatar, there's Dubai, there's Saudi. There's multiple airlines that you can fly with that will help you break up your flight and you can do a stopover for a day or two just to regenerate and, um, you know, uh, and refresh yourself for the next leg of the flight. So. The distance can be a problem because, you know, it's not as quick and easy for you, if required, for you to then zoom back to the UK. Like if you're living in Turkey or Egypt, four hours later, you're back on your okay. doorstep. Well, allowing for the traveling 
transitions, um, you're back on your doorstep. So, you know, it's a, a, it's a, a whole day to two days before you can get back. So oh, I'm going sat, back this sat, time sat, because sat, my daughter's having a baby. I'm making sure that I'm going to be there a day before. She might deliver early. I don't know. But I, there's no way on this earth that if she called me and uh -huh. said, Mum, I'm in labour, that I'm going to get there in time. I'll probably get there when the baby's arrived. Do you know what I mean? So same applies to births, deaths, marriages. You just have to organise yourself a little bit better to allow for that time difference okay. and the travelling time. So... Last but not least, my number five is going to surprise you and come as a bit of a shock. What? But the difficulty that I faced as one of my five and my final five is the weather, surprisingly. What? Now, when you come from cold climates like England, you've adapted your body yeah. to that temperature, you see. Betul and si. when you come here, there's something else that occurs that you were not accustomed to, and that is sweating. You are going to sweat some. In fact, that's why most people here are healthy, because their bodies are expelling all of those toxins and yep. just bringing back a healthier body yeah. by sweating it out. In the UK, I used to sit in a sauna maybe twice a week just yeah. to get my body back. Jadi ketika di Malaysia itu tidak perlu lagi sauna saunaan gitu. Di luar aja udah keringetan gitu. Guys. Sama kayak di Indonesia itu kalau di sini. Kalau udah jam 10, jam 11, 12, sampai jam 3 itu pasti keringetan gitu guys ya. Nggak perlu sauna lagi. Kalau di Inggris sauna, di sini nggak, Mbak. To sweating again, getting my pores ah. used to it. And here it's going to happen itself because it's hot. Yeah. And I will warn you that it's hot. My mum went back simply because she was here in March. We had some 36s in temperature and it was way enough. too much for her and yes you've got air conditioning in your house you've got air conditioning in yeah. your car it is not as, as as unbearable as the likes of the arab country saudi arabia dubai when they have yeah the arab saudi itu bisa 50 ya kan heat 46 you know you can't even stand outside for two minutes without yep. without melting so here the max i think we've seen is 36 it wasn't for very long and you're back down to your low end of 30s and some places you can get your 27s and even 25 so if uh -huh. you go to the highlands where i am right now i'm sat out here i don't have air conditioning uh -huh. i'm not melting and this is peak time guys. i'm out you at like 1 30 in the afternoon whereas if you go to the likes of kl or even maybe malacca where i'm staying this kind of time of day it is it's quite hot um, and you might not want to stand out in it for too long. But what I will Kelihatan banget sih di belakangnya itu panas banget guys. Say asli. is that give it some time if you're planning on moving here uh -huh. to stay, your body will adapt to the temperature. I'm actually going back to the UK in about two weeks time and I'm not looking forward to even their summer because their summer is going to be cool for me. So I'm going to be that person walking around the streets of London in a coat in 27, yeah. 28, 29 degrees because now my body has adapted to. You know the really funny thing? When I used to go to places like Saudi, okay. Turkey, um, when it were, the weather was really hot and there's me okay. with my uh, temperature control to the UK. Um, you know, we're like thin dresses, summer dresses, oh. sweltering, melting. And there they are in their hoodies and trackies with their trainers and maybe even a scarf because they're not used to it. That's their cold and this is their hot. So ya, the ya, weather ya. is something that you will get adjust. You will. Jadi kalau ke negara-negara Arab gitu ya guys ya Jazira itu kalau musim dingin kan tidak begitu dingin. Jadi mereka kayak udah biasa aja gitu. Karena di negara mereka lebih dingin gitu. Adjust to. You'll adapt to it. Give it some time. But it is glorious to wake up every single day to sunshine and this. Uh -huh. Another thing about Malaysia when I talk about the weather is the rain. Hujan. It pours down. You'll yeah. be driving down the motorway and it'll be clear and sunny. And the next thing is, boom, there's this downpour <laughs> that the window wipers can't handle. And then you'll drive some more and you're back in the sunshine again because there was a cloud over that bit. Yeah. Um, it lasts, it doesn't actually last that long. So footwear is important that you do wear something that in case you get caught out in it, that your shoes are going to handle it and having an umbrella is also beneficial. But because it doesn't last very long, you can take shelter in a shop and they yeah. actually the like public places have been um 
designed so that if it does rain, that the shops have like these outside shelters underneath them. Unlike, you know, in the UK, you'll have your flush building. Here, uh -huh. most of the buildings will have those little walkways underneath if it yes. does rain. Um, on a positive, the rain is not, um, it's not horrible. It's not cold, so it doesn't feel bad because it's warm. It feels quite nice. Uh, the other thing that you're going to have to adapt yourself yeah, to is suatu hal yang menyenangkan lah. Um, when I first came here and I stayed out in that coconut dome, that was the, that was my breaking point. Prior to that, I'd hear them and I would jump. But once I'd slept in this coconut dome, I was practically out in the thunderstorm. I could see the lightning. I could really feel the thunder resonate yeah. through my body. And after that, I started to really like and enjoy it. And if a thunderstorm came on, I wanted that loud crashing. I wanted that spark of light because actually it's quite beautiful. So they're the five things that I found difficult. I actually have a sixth and that was it was difficult coming uh -huh. up with the difficulties. Do you see what I mean? So it goes without saying, there are no words to describe uh. life in Malaysia. And if you've enjoyed what I have posted, please like it, please share it and subscribe so that we can share this information with as many people as possible. So that that misunderstanding that you have of Malaysia can be wiped out because I had a huge misunderstanding when I came here and I have been so pleasantly surprised that I have forgotten about my homeland. I've even forgotten about my kids. <coughs> Still love you guys, <coughs> but you're going to have to come to me. Okay. And then you, once you do, I pretty much guarantee you aren't going to want to go back. And as I have done, and I am going to add to every single one of my videos, Malaysian government give me permanent residency. I want to stay here. I don't want to go What? anywhere else. I want to live here. And I will be the yes, advocate you for your country. Nice and I'll do whatever you tell me to do for the rest of my life. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. That's all I've been doing. That's all I've been doing. Wow. Lima hal yang dibenci tentang Malaysia. Gitu katanya, guys. Ya. Sebenarnya ya penyesuaian aja sih gitu kan. Tapi yang paling dibenci Ji itu kalau perempuan biasanya berat badan naik kalau ke Malaysia. Itu masuk tadi. Padahal itu kan sebuah hal yang menyenangkan. Tapi kenapa menjadi hal yang dibenci? Karena perempuan itu kalau naik badannya, berat badannya itu menjadi masalah. <laughs> ya kan? <laughs> ya kan? Iya loh. Iya ke? Betul, betul, betul. Kan? Nah di sini ya guys ya kita bisa melihat bagaimana uh, penjelasan daripada uh, kaknya tadi ya kan uh, dari bule ini ya kan dan mereka ya pastilah ya kan uh, ada beradaptasi di, di negara orang ya mana kalau masalah kayak cuaca oke okay lah itu memang agak-agak gimana gitu ya guys ya setiap orang kadang tubuhnya itu menerima atau enggak gitu kan pasti ada hal yang seperti itu gitu kan tapi kalau masalah makanan, oke okay lah. Semua mengakui bahwasanya ketika tinggal di Malaysia itu makanannya sedap-sedap, murah-murah, nggak bikin stres, ya kan? Lapar tinggal makan lima menit, lima menit lagi makan lagi gitu. Intinya kalau di Malaysia itu ya udah makan, 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 makan gitu hmm. aja ya guys ya. Ya kalau kita tengok juga bagaimana keamanan di sana, ya kan? Pasti aman juga gitu ya guys ya. So ya sebenarnya ya itu. Bagaimana cara kita menanggapinya gitu ya guys ya Tapi yang terpenting ya, tadi ya masalah makanan ya <laughs> Masih aja itu ya mbaknya Oke okay, guys itu dulu videonya Terima kasih sudah tengok video ini sampai selesai Apabila ada salah kata mau dimaafkan Saya pamit untuk diri Dan jangan lupa like Kalau teman-teman suka Dan subscribe channel ini Untuk video update terbaru daripada Cak Mojib Oke okay, terima kasih Sampai jumpa di video selanjutnya Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh